Okay, so we have the radio out. We're going to turn it on its side. And we're going to remove these two screws, and then there are two on the other side that we're going to remove as well. So let me do that. So once we remove those four screws, we remove the radio from the bracket, and then you're going to remove this screw, and then this screw. So let me do that. So after we remove this screw and this screw, we're going to turn it on its side, and we're going to remove all eight of these screws holding the heat sink on. Okay, so I've removed those eight screws on the heat sink, and we're going to turn it around to the front, and we're going to remove this, these two screws right here. So I will do that. Okay, after we remove those two screws, we're going to lay it upside down on its head and remove that screw, that screw, and that screw. So three more screws. Okay, with those th three screws removed, uh, you're going to very carefully go around and take a flathead screwdriver and pry just gently. It comes off fairly easy, but you're going to go around and pry the bottom plate off. Okay, so just be very careful. There's a open a spot that says open here and one back there. So just very carefully remove this bottom plate. Okay, so I gently went around and pried up, just popped it loose a little bit. So then you pull this off and just set it to the side. Okay, with the bottom plate off, you have to be very careful but you're going to lift this board up and there's a ribbon cable that is holding it on. So we have to be very careful with that cable. So we just want to lift it up and we're going to be very careful at, with this step because you're going to disconnect that ribbon cable and you do not want to damage that cable. Okay, so there is where I removed the ribbon cable and now have it sitting on its back and if you look over in this area we'll see if we can get in there you will see let's see if we can get this working here um, it's going to be hard to see on here let's see if I can turn it get better lighting going to see over here you're going to see three black um, resistor type things it's either a resistor or a fuse but the one in the middle is the one that is blown and if you have a 2.3 amp resistor then you can replace it with that. If you don't, some people are um, just bridging it with a wire. You can do that as well. I don't know what else would damage if a high current went through there and you didn't have something to protect what's on the other end. But some people are reporting pretty good results with that. I don't have a 2.3 amp resistor so I am going to use a wire and bridge that connection. Um, it's a pretty tight space. So, good luck. Um, if you're not skilled with soldering iron, I would not attempt this. So, okay, you're gonna have to get some wire cutters, some pliers, and probably cut that out and then uh, put the wire in there. But that is what needs fixed or replaced or bridged and um, if you can get that bridged, put it all back together again, put it in the car, your backlight on your Honda will be working again. So I have a piece of wire here, and what I like to do when I'm working in very tight spaces 
is I like to go ahead and um, go ahead and solder the ends. Just go ahead and coat the ends of the wire with solder. So it's a lot easier just to go ahead and coat the tips with solder. And I'm going to attempt to solder this onto this board. So I only have two hands, so I won't be able to film it. And I may not want to be able to film it because I'll be honest, I'm a little nervous. But um, what it, my plan is, is I plan on um, putting this wire down here and then going through the side with the soldering iron to tap it while I'm holding this down there. So there's a little gap on the bottom here that you can kind of slide the soldering iron into and while I hold this on to where I want it and hopefully it will stick. So I'll let you know how it goes. I guess you can see it worked fairly well. I, I put the soldering iron through the back side here, held the wire down where it needed to be, and it attached. My wire is a little long, um, then I attached it on this side. It's not pretty, no, but it's on there. And I'm going to take a little piece of electrical tape and just cover it up, um, just in case uh, it comes loose or... Um, exposed wire which there seems to be a little piece right there so I'm going to cover it up with a little piece of electrical tape and then put it all back together and see if it fixed it there um, just put the radio back together uh, put it in the car and voila we have a backlit display now um, don't know how long it'll last because I bridged those wire, that wire, or I used a wire as a bridge instead of replacing the resistor. So um, high voltage could go through there and cause further damage. But for right now, it appears to be working. Uh, I'll have to reset my radio and all that fun stuff. But looks like a success. I haven't yet put my dash back together. So, um, that's it. So, hope that helps someone out there uh, maybe fix their radio. Uh, because Honda told me it was going to be over $300 to fix it. So, a little solder. Hour or two on your, of your time. It's worth it to me to do it yourself. So, hope that helps. See ya.